What's up, you lovely lurkers? What do you think about the game of subjective? OMG, bees! Doing as nature intended. And Scott Smart or Outsmart? I'm still trying to figure out if the Cowboys were playing the Giants or the Little Giants, so let's lurk! I have an apology to make as we start the the show and sorry joel it's not for you <laughs> now that's, that's all you get joel that's it i heard okay, it's fine that's fine it's fine willie i'm sorry i i re didn't realize how much not into sports you were it wasn't even close <laughs> Yeah, uh, I thought it was subjective because it's literally just picking pictures. But, um, ooh, yeah, yeah, you got you got cooked this week, like the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I was sitting on the sidelines with them going, you and me both, brother. <laughs> so, everyone, I won the game of subjective, which means I get to pick this week's subject. And welcome back to another round of Subjective. This week's subject is going to be the best breakfast cereals. There is a clear number one. And this, before we get it just into the controversy, this list that you sent me. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous, right? In what sort of ways does any of this make sense? I just, I, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> We're going to pick our top five. But it's a hundred. It is one hundred. And the one hundredth? Is Pop Tart Crunch? But I've... oh my god, the worst, the most <laughs> egregious thing on this list is that Golden Crisp is ninety eight. Meanwhile, that should be so much higher. <clears throat> something called Concentrate Cereal is number three. You better not pick it, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Listen, Golden Crisp lost out to something called King Vitaman Cereal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you don't know how the game's played, we pick a subject, we pick a team. You guys help us vote on who picked the best team. And last week's loser says what? It's my turn to go first. I don't understand. I don't know if it's a benefit or a hindrance to go first, but my number one pick this week is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I love that pick. It's definitely on my list, but with my number one, I'm going to go with Honey Nut Cheerios. Damn it. What a fantastic choice. My number two, keeping things lucky, Lucky Charms. They're always after them, and I would have been after them in the later rounds, but now they're gone. So for my number two pick, what might be my favorite cereal of all time, I'm going with Fruity Pebbles. That tracks. One of my favorites growing up, my number three, not much of a wild card, is Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes? Yes. Not even on my list. What? Didn't even make my top ten. Yowza. My, I know. I know. For my number three, we are going with, also not a wild card this week, Peanut Butter Crunch. No! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. There, uh, what we're discovering is that I really need to read this list before <laughs> we play this game. My number four, Captain Crunch, all berries. Oh, yum! That's like a close second to Fruity Pebbles. Oh, for my number four, then. I'm going to go with the other side of the aisle. I'm going to go with Cocoa Puffs. Everybody loves Cocoa Puffs. If you don't like Cocoa Puffs, you're cuckoo. You don't like chocolate, and you can't be my friend. <laughs> Joel. <laughs> oh, no. But to end it close to home for me, one of my favorites, sitting down, watching Sonic before, um, before the bus showed up in the morning. 
Apple Jacks. Okay. You might have sniped me there on number five. So for my number five, I'm going with tricks. Not just for silly rabbits. For adults that like kid. Nope. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> moms love them. Oh, God. Why was nobody ever growing up worried about the moms? Uh, yeah, we should come out with our own cereal just for moms. Maybe for hot moms. <laughs> so, somebody somebody remade the song. Uh, uh, what's the song? Jesse's mom has got it going on. Oh, you, you mean Stacy's mom? Stacy's mom. And somebody said, what is wrong with Jesse's mom for wanting to sleep with these young boys? Stacy. Jesse? You're thinking I of invited Jesse's her girl. Jesse. You're thinking of Jesse's, Jesse's girl. girl. Yeah. And it's Stacy's mom. is all a blur. <laughs> so much <laughs> sex. Uh, okay. So that's the game. It's subjective. So remember, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just what you think is best. Help us vote. On our socials, wherever you lurk, and make sure that this guy is the winner. Me, Daddy, please. <laughs> oh, Scott, were you afraid of bees growing up? Oh yes. For one to what extent? specific reason, uh, I watched... it stung your penis. Hmm. And it Ooh, has... the way you moaned said you were never afraid of that. <laughs> and it's never gone back. <laughs> uh, no, I, like many other people my age, watched a, a classic holiday movie called Home Alone, which starred Macaulay Culkin. Yep. And he happened to follow it up with another tale as old as time heartwarming story called my girl do, do did he remember? really star in that movie or was he there for just a short period of time <clears throat> i mean he was in at least a third or two thirds of it something like that okay. and for those who are fam unfamiliar with that movie he plays a kid who moves next door to anna chalumsky of veep fame and uh he just happens to have an allergy to bees. <laughs> do you have an and allergy to bees? I, I do not. But after that movie, it didn't really matter because you were like, oh, <laughs> maybe I do. But if if the kid from Home Alone who survived two brutal assaults and robberies can die from a bee sting, spoiler alert, sorry, it's like 30 years old, grow up already, get over it. Get a job. Then uh, maybe I too can die from bees. Um. So, yeah, I, to this day, have an aversion, but not necessarily a fear. Have you been stung? Oh, yes. My, uh, my worst sting story is not from reading about tantric sex. No. Like the artist? <laughs> Roxanne! I was at the state fair. My dad and I would go to the racetrack at the state fair, which was there a long time ago, and... Uh, I went to go get something at the concession stand, but as I was walking down, there was a bee on the hand railing, and because I was smaller, I was, like, using the hand railing, and I, my hand just went right into it. Bee stung me, hurt like the Charles Dickens, uh, and I immediately started bawling, and my dad had to take me to emergency services, and that's the only time. One time. You've only been stung once. I have been stung too many to count. Sorry, but twice, you know, okay. penis thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, though, my worst one also happened on my hand. What were you doing? Biking. I grabbed a bike handle to start oh, riding off with no. the boys. Stung my hand. The, the fear of getting stung in the hand, in the palm, is awful. There's, um, uh, I, I was talking with somebody today who rides motorcycle and they were riding and a bee flew into their sleeve and put it down, uh, put, take, take the bike down. <laughs> nope. They got stung like several times as they were trying to like 
smash it against the side of themselves what? to like, kill the bee. Because, yeah, it was just in there, stung them once. They're like, ah, stung them twice. And so suddenly they're like riding down the freeway, like looking like they're beating their chest like King Kong. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, w I would have put it down. <laughs> just crash into a car just and yep. end it. <laughs> I don't want the arm. I don't need my life. I'm done. The reason I talk about bees is because we've, like, as a society, we've been talking about the bee population for, like, what feels like over a decade. Why is that? Like, what is your understanding of the bee population? I feel the uh, bees, much like the dolphins, uh, got wise and started just going back to their home planet because they're like, you know what? Fuck this. All 2020, I don't need it. <laughs> I'm out. And so they started to decline, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Monsanto. Monsanto's to blame. What if I were to tell you, Scott, that bees are illegal aliens? Did you find out about this at your uh, most recent Flat Earth meeting? No. <laughs> My Q meeting. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Did you move up in rank? Are you, uh, are you getting to wear the buffalo head? I haven't paid that tier yet. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it was 12 shroot bucks, and I've only made four. Well, you better be careful. There's a law being passed in California that's going to force you to reveal how uh, how those electronics work. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just read this post. I I'm browsing on Reddit, watching some videos this week, and bees continue to come up. Okay. It's like you can't escape them. So this says... As concern for declining pollination mounts, many businesses and homeowners are stepping up to help installing beehives on rooftops and in backyards across the country. But according to the executive director of Xerxes Society for Invertebrate Cons Conservation. Is that an acronym? X gonna give it to you. <laughs> Keeping honeybees to save the bees is like raising chickens to save the birds. Oh, because it's just like one type of bee. Like chickens, pigs, cattle, and other livestock, honeybees are not native to North America. They are a domesticated insect. Where are they from? Europe. They were brought over to produce honey. Oh. But... The vast majority of things that need to be pollinated, like wildflowers, mm -hmm. um, tall grasses, trees, those types of things, are actually pollinated by hornets, moths, and other insects. Ew. <laughs> and so the problem is, is we're actually killing off really important plants because we want to save the goddamn bees. Wait, wait, hold on. What, what are we killing off? Because I'm, I'm being told in my adult house that I'm supposed to plant all these plants and wildflowers to bring the bees back. Okay. So what do we do instead? <clears throat> what? Uh, no, I asked you a question. What plants are we killing off? All those ones that you're trying to regrow. Mm. Those, those like the honeybee is not the bee that is a best pollinator for that. Oh, okay. so it's like they're showing up and they're like, they're like the nerdy kid that's used to playing D&D, &D, and they show up at a frat house, and they're like, I'm told I'm what you're looking for. Uh, uh, okay. and, the, and, the, and, the, and the sorority girls are like, no, I it? want the murder hornet. He's got a, <laughs> he's got a bigger stinger. <laughs> I'm afraid to see him out in a parking lot, but yeah. in this context, <laughs> the moth is in the basement and just getting... Baked. Railed. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Uh the uh, but uh, we're supposed to like we're supposed to like the bees and what I they Okay, yes. here's what here's you what, know we what the do. solution is. Here's what we do. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm ready. Picture this. We plant all of the plants next to the now legal marijuana plants. Yes. That brings in all types of bugs and insects to pollinate. Mm-hmm. And then we get the most dank weed in the contiguous United States. 
I don't know how they do it in Alaska and Hawaii. Buffalo? Probably indoors. Yeah. Oh. Or that. <laughs> what do you think and we do should do? Bats. Bats? Not the animal. The man? The sport. The sports thing. The, the stick that they use in baseball? Yes. What are we going to do with these bats? Intimidate them. The, the bees or the hornets? No. The hornets are our friends now. Okay. They sit on our shoulders. They look at us and we're like, what up? Bee bitch. <laughs> Fuck the bees. Support moth. Okay, you, you said moths, hornets, and what? Hornets. Other insects that pollinate. I wasn't quite sure that last one. <laughs> <laughs> I've only done a superficial reading on this. Okay. But all I know is that these goddamn bees need to die. Oh, um, I don't know if you're going to get a lot of support on this one. Like, where else are you going to find an animal that does your your most feared thing, but at the same time does the most delicious thing? It, it's going to be hard to find that combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most feared... I don't I don't know anything that literally shits out gold yet. <laughs> they barf gold. I know, I'm saying like from the other side. So what we have right now is puke gold. Okay. So we need to find a golden shower or steamer. Gold nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're rich. That's our that's our billion dollar idea. All right, hold on. I'm going to write this down. Make hornet that poops 24 karat gold. <laughs> Got it. I'll work on yes. that for next next week's show. <laughs> 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 what Willie wants to do with these bees and all of this conservation that's going right now is to basically wipe the slate clean and start over. Yes. I think this person should do as well. You may now click on the link, Willie. Oh, the thing that says doing as nature intended? Yep. Oh, no. Because oh. once you read it, the headline is American woman admits to not wiping her bum for the past two years. Everyone has different personal hygiene habits and rituals. But I'm sure we can all agree that we wipe our backside after going to the bathroom. <laughs> well, it would seem that not Everyone actually does this after one American woman admitted to not wiping her bum for the past two years. <laughs> you see, the woman begins her confession, I don't actually wipe. When you think what animals do in nature, nobody actually wipes, so why do we? She goes on to claim there's got to be a benefit to not wiping. Which is followed up by her saying, I don't really know what it is, but if God wanted us to wipe after we used the restroom, we would have been, we would have had that built into our anatomy. Whoa. So you know what she does? Instead of wiping. Eats it. Oh, I wish. She started using a litter box instead of a toilet. Now she oh. claims that. She has no regret, regrets, ragrets, no regrets. She uh, has not gotten as sick. I don't know how often she was getting sick from wiping the normal way before, but she feels like her immune system has been built up since she stopped wiping, and it's probably because she's not exposing herself to those chemicals. What are I, those chemicals? I don't know. I feel like she's the kind of person that goes to this anti bee meeting with you, though. I mean, she's probably just trying to look out for all the gay frogs. <laughs> so comments are gold, as we know. One person said, no other animal uses forks or spoons either. Unlike a dog, I can't lick my own ass. <laughs> Have you, listen, animals clean their butts. But how do they do it? I know that bears grab rabbits and wipe because shit doesn't stick to the fur. <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, bears generally are into feces play. My favorite you know one, though, uh, of the comments is somebody said, 
They should make a t-shirt that says, Born to shit, forced to wipe. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't understand. Like, the one Pete, thing I don't have... understand is how does it not smell? This person is 100% single. Unless there's some website we haven't found out about. Don't. Don't do it. D don't send those links. Why? <laughs> no. Mm-mm. We need to talk. We need to talk about people's pooping problems. There's some serious ones out there. I heard this thing today on the Philly D show that th there is a significant rise in the use of laxatives. Mm. For what reason? Because social media things like TikTok and Instagram are filled with these influencers saying, in order to poop better. You should be pooping X amount of times, but they don't have any research. And so these people are like, oh, if I'm not pooping, you know, if I go a day without going number two, mm -hmm. that's bad. I, but they're not seeing a doctor about it. They're seeing Kim K. Mm, yeah. I feel like there's a fine line between influence and manipulation. And like, it's all mm -hmm. a sales job, right? So like sales is that line. And so it's like, which side do you fall on? And I never want to, I never want to fall on manipulation without it being like on purpose, you know, like I'm trying to, man, I'm trying to influence you and Joel to keep fighting because it's good for the show, I feel, but I would sure. never want to manipulate it by saying Dick. like, Joel, Willie was talking about your mom before we started recording. And I'd said, Dolores Vollmer is a saint. <laughs> you keep her name out of your yeah, mouth. And I said... <laughs> and I said we had a wonderful evening. <laughs> Dolores and I painted the town red. L listen to that Doja Cat song. That's what we did. And then white. Nope, just the. Never mind. I've never heard the song. I don't want to know. You don't want to know. All right, I have a I have a question for you then. Oh God, it's time to play everybody's least favorite game. How much? To go two years without wiping? No. That's too easy. Number too easy. Each... What? <laughs> <laughs> How much would it take for you to go on a date with this person? Assuming you don't have a fiancé. I... And I mean... Is there a any obligation? real date. Yes. Is there an obligation for... No, 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 no. You could see how things go, because I would be honestly interested more interested to see like where it goes but you have to go to do to dinner and something dinner and activity uh this this might be tmi lurkers mm -mm. this thing this nose more for looks than anything <laughs> there's a very <laughs> finite amount of smells that i can i can enjoy What's i've your got this one? nice halloween gourds beer and if i smell it if i get my nose in there and i smell real good i can smell it if I put this in the same room as Scott, he's going to go, ooh, that's an IPA. Delicious. Yes, that's exactly what I will do. I drink. Mm -hmm. I can smell that oh. very well. Vomit. You can smell butt vomit? Stuff. <laughs> I can smell the worst, and I can smell it clear as day. You are what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> And so I think I would be able to smell this woman as I'm driving to the restaurant. So here's what we're going to do for give this date, Scott. Just give me a number. Well, let me just paint the picture real quick. Oh, gosh. I'm taking her to Chuck E. Cheese because I won't know if it's her or somebody else. <laughs> we mask the smell. Oh, yuck. <laughs> And so you can eat pizza, you can play games, and then afterwards, we've got to do something. Horseback riding. That's another good one. Yeah, that's going to mask a lot of smells. <laughs> oh, man. And I would do those things $5,000. Okay. That's not unreasonable. I think uh, I think we can come up with a Patreon to... to... <laughs> make this happen so if you lose 
the game that's upcoming. Oh, exactly. <laughs> but I might not be a smart man, Scott. That makes two of us. Because you don't have a good track record of our next game. Scott Smart versus Outsmart. All right, you lovely lurkers. It is time for another round of Scott Smart or Outsmart. You ready, Scott? I sure ain't. Okay. <laughs> Did you say taint? Fantastic. <laughs> Here's the game, <laughs> lovely lurkers. I've got five tricky trivia questions for Scott. For each question that he gets right, he will get one step closer to the real answer because here's the twist. All the answers have a connection. I am particularly a fan of this week's connection. Scott, if you win. Willie has to. And when I say has to, I mean within 48 hours has to complete... Oh. An additional three videos for our socials. One minute or less, but no excuses. Otherwise, the bet's got to stop. But if you lose... I'm already wearing a ch cheese head in two weeks. <laughs> if you lose when you're wearing that Packers outfit... You gotta have a foam finger, and I need a photo for the socials. Uh, okay. All right. I, I think I know just the one. I've been looking at a lot of Packers merch recently. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Question number one. What popular aquarium fish shares its name with a 2013 opera that used the ballad of reading Gaul for its liberato. I understood some of those words. I'm going to guess beta. Incorrect. Duh. Question number two. The highest mountain in the Congo bears what name of an explorer? The discoverer of Dr. Livingstone. Uh, uh, Kensington. Incorrect. Question number three. What hit 2015 sports movie ends with Michael B. Jordan climbing the steps of the Philadelphia Museum of Art? That would be Creed. That's correct. We're one for three. <laughs> Question number four. Which Mary Tyler Moore show spinoff followed a widowed Cloris Leachman into her new life in San Francisco. The Golden Girls. <laughs> I think that was in Miami. Uh... Incorrect. Question number five. Canola oil is the main ingredient of what cooking spray and product of Arthur Meyerhoff? Patented by Meyerhoff in 1957. Is it Pam? That's correct. Oh, I know what this is. Scott, you have two out of five. What is the connection? With only Pam and Creed, is it characters from The Office? Yes! <laughs> 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 yes! Oh man. You have so Your much answers, video recording workers. to do. <laughs> I've got I've got six. I've got six videos to make in the next 48 hours. <laughs> the answers are what popular aquarium fish shares its name with the 2013 opera? Oscar. The highest mountain in the Congo is named Stanley. Oh. And the Mary Tyler Moore spin-off show is named Phyllis. Well, I'm glad I got the one because I probably could have taken a guess with just Creed. But that's our show, lovely lurkers. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Please rate and review wherever you lurk. We appreciate the love. So remember to be kind to each other and we will see you this weekend.